Hello and welcome to this Cloudworks for Revit product demonstration video. This is a very short video just to give you some of the basics of the tools and functionality within Cloudworks for Revit. So I hope you enjoy the session and look forward to getting your feedback on the content. So the first thing that we're going to do is click on the Open LGS button in the Cloudworks menu and you'll see the Open LGS file dialog and then we're going to press OK and you'll see that the data is loaded immediately into the window. Now we're going to use the box fence tool to do a hide outside. So this will just focus on the data or the area of the sports hall. And then we can change that clipping name so that we can refer back to that in the clipping manager at a later date. Now the next stage in this process uh, is we're going to use the quick slice wall function to define uh, a slice, which will allow us to then very quickly develop a floor plan. So just jumping back into that clip man clipping manager again, we're able to change the name of the slice and also the thickness, and we can come back to that at a later stage and we can enable and disable that. But at this point, we're just going to turn off all the clippings and go back to the original point cloud. Now what we're gonna do here is using the view from tool, and we're now gonna create a, a vertical slice, which we'll use for heighting all of our rooms. So now we're going to use a really cool function called set level by, and in this instance we're going to use it uh, by points. So we're actually going to use the point cloud to set the construction level. So here we're going to put in ground floor, okay, and then we can create a plan view, and that will be stored all within the Revit hierarchy. We'll just do that again for the ceiling as well. Exactly the same process, and you'll see that now propagated down into the Revit hierarchy. We're just going to double click on the north view and turn the clipping back off and you can see the data and you can see the level information and that allows us to make sure that when we're creating our 3D models that they all adhere to the level information correctly. Okay so what we're going to do here uh, once we've created our a slice and you can see we've got a slightly thicker slice than we may normally do if we we're just creating a 2D floor plan. But we're now going to set up and establish the type of wall that we're going to create. So we're going to jump into the Revit tools and choose a basic wall um, and then we're just going to strip out some of the attributes um, from this wall and create a custom one. So we can just delete out some of the um, the information. Uh, just choose you know what it is, you know, a default wall, um, the, the thickness of the wall, etc. And then we are going to go into the Cloudworks menu and we're going to use the um, fitter to create a wall. And now you can see here we can specify the various settings. So you can choose a pick point and you can choose the type of wall. Uh, but we're going to go back in and look at those settings again, just a little bit more detail. So if you click, you can choose a pick point or fence. You can select the level where it's going to be created. And you've got the top constraint and also the bottom constraint, which is uh, the select level. But you've also got the location line. So that will give you an indication of whether you want to choose um, the wall center line, uh, finished exterior face, finished interior face. You can also create slanted walls as well. But now when we pick on that wall, that will automatically, you can see in real time, that will find now um, the best fit um, and you can see that it's found that wall thickness there and we can actually override that value if we want to. Um, we can also give the wall, uh, we can create a new wall type directly within that dialog and that's it, we've created our first section of wall. So we can just repeat that process now a couple of times over. Um, here we're just extending that out so that we can fit a door um, slightly later as well if we need to. You can see we've got that information available to fit the door. But now let's go in and just create another few walls. So we're going to the wall dialog, make sure we ch check the um, select level and the top constraints again. And we're just going to pick on it. You can see it's come up It's a slightly thinner wall this time. I'm just going to override that to 130 mil. Again, create the new type of wall and just press OK once that's been created and then boom, we have our wall. And we can just continue this process. So once we've done this, obviously, again, if there's an area which is replicated a couple of times, it's just a matter of copy and paste and making sure it's all connected correctly. Uh, but what you can see here is now we've just very, very rapidly managed to generate those three custom walls. And obviously we can reuse those uh, thicknesses again now for the other parts of the operation and, uh, and start building out that 3D model. So what we can do now is just, we're gonna just do what we call that box fence again, just to hide some data. Go back to our clipping manager and turn on the data 
for the door. So you can see now we've got the door area. So in exactly the same way we use the wall fitter, we're now going to use the door fitter and just pick a couple of points that will automatically fit the, uh, the door and it will give us the um, measurement information that, that is defined. And then we can just drop the, the door straight onto the wall and it's as simple as that. And we can just do that again and again and again um, until we've got our final 3D model. And there you go, we can just see now the 3D model in line alongside the point cloud and that, at that given slice. Okay, so what you can see here then is obviously we've, uh, we've copied and pasted some of those elements across into the other parts of the room, but that is the basis of our 3D model. And then we can just use the forward and backward movement of the slice just to double check and verify that everything has been put together correctly. So there we go, we're back to the full point cloud. And now we're looking at inserting some windows. We're actually now going to use the window fitter tool within the Cloudworks ribbon. And we're just going to line ourselves up on this uh, this side face where we've just created that uh, one of those generic uh, walls based on the parameters that we've uh, defined. And then we're going to go to the Cloudworks menu and uh, we are going to now use the fit window function. So it opens up a similar dialog. And now we're just going to start picking directly on the point cloud uh, in that in that 2D view. And it will do exactly the same as it's done for the walls and for the doors. And it will give us the closest match and we can override that and give it a new, um, a new name as well so that we can reuse that. Now, being that these are all pretty uniform along this side, I think they're exactly the same window. Hopefully we can just reuse that time and time again. So what I've done is I've sped up um, this part of the video now so you can see the creation. So we're just gonna duplicate that five or six times along this facade. And you can see I'm just doing that double pick all the way along and that's putting those windows in exactly the right location alongside our 3D model. So that will just show you how quickly we can start to um, generate our 3D data from our reality capture data using Cloudworks for Revit. So uh, yeah, there you go, absolutely um, easy to use and uh, easy to get to grips with. So thank you very much for listening to that Cloudworks for Revit product demonstration. If you've got any questions or queries, do feel free to reach out. Uh, you can contact any of the guys in any of the sales organizations. Um, take care everyone. I look forward to getting some feedback on the content and we'll speak to you soon.